prostatic hypertrophy, which is our subject, benign prostatic hypertrophy, meaning no cancer, uh, is probably the most common prostate problem. It will probably affect uh, every man in some way during, out, during his lifetime. First, I want to talk a little bit about the anatomy. This is the bladder. This is the prostate. This is the rectum. And this is the urethra, which carries the urine from the bladder to the outside. The prostate is at a very critical point. Now, this is a normal bladder, normal prostate, and a normal channel for the urine to go from inside the bladder to outside and be eliminated, keeping this a low pressure vessel and allowing it to do its fundamental job, which is to protect the kidneys and give us the ability uh, to lead normal lives. Over time, this situation changes. And benign enlargement of the prostate uh, is a given. This is uh, prostatic enlargement. Uh, BPH, and just so we can look at this, see the difference? Normal prostate, good sized channel. Big prostate, not so good channel. When the bladder pushes hard against the uh, resistance of an enlarged prostate, the muscles in the bladder hypertrophy or get thick. You may think you continue to urinate in a normal fashion, but in reality, you're really not. The bladder is working like crazy to get the urine out. We're very used to the idea that we can allow fairly long periods of time between uh, emptying the bladder. The reason you can do that is because the bladder has a very unique characteristic called compliance. Compliance means the bladder muscles actually slide one over the other so you can go from a very small content after you've emptied your bladder to a very large content before you really have to do something about it. That's called compliance. When the bladder muscle thickens, the compliance breaks down. And instead of having a normal voiding pattern, you get sort of fits and starts <clears throat> urgent voiding, something that just doesn't fit your social schedule. And that's where people have urgency and at times they soil themselves and that's called urgency incontinence. These are what happens when you get the loss of compliance. These are all symptoms of that change. Now, this is a graph that points out that this process really is in place throughout our lives. And what this shows is that both the volume and the rate of flow change as we go through life. Irritative voiding symptoms was actually significantly elevated. What we want you to do, gentlemen, is when you self-diagnose these problems, we want you down here. We don't want you up here where a very significant percentage of the people who finally go to the doc to be seen already have very high symptom score index. Let's look at some of the clinical aspects. We do a digital rectal exam and we can learn a great deal from just feeling the prostate. Here it is. And uh, we use the digital rectal exam to assess the size of this organ. We use it to uh, assess the health of this organ. PSA rises predictably as we get older and the prostate volume increases. So I look at PSA and think about some of the characteristics what we're going to hone in on regarding benign prostatic enlargement. If you think of the prostate as a donut, the donut hole being the channel through which the urine passes, the benign enlargement occurs closest to the donut hole. Most people who have concerns about their prostate health really ought to be seen by a urologist because that's what we're trained to think about. The volume of the prostate <clears throat> can be determined in a number of ways. 
the most common, probably the least accurate, is the digital rectal exam again. Transrectal ultrasound allows us to actually measure parameters of the prostate from which we can calculate a volume. It's a consistent fact that the prostate gets larger as we get older. What do you do? You limit the amount of fluid you take before you go somewhere. You check out every John at the shopping center so you know where it is so you can get there in time. As benign prostatic enlargement begins to manifest, we see this growth of tissue in the area closest to the channel. And as time goes by, this area grows. This is not cancer, this is benign enlargement. And it tends to narrow and increase the distance of flow through this area. And here, it's almost shut things down. How do we measure it? The voiding diary is a clear, simple method. The voiding symptom score index. Now we have a website and on that website uh, we have one of these but it's automated. If it's less than eight you can live with it. If it's um, under 20 uh, you probably should be on some kind of treatment. If it's over 20 and close to 30 you probably are going to have to have some type of intervention. It's a term here called LUTs it refers to lower urinary tract symptoms, and those are the symptoms we've been talking about. The LUTs is a product of the changes of the muscles of the bladder as they work against resistance, and we can do that with medications called alpha blockers. Now, alpha blockers are Flomax, Cardura, and Uroxitrol. Now, why am I making a point of this? I know more than one person who's had very difficult time as a result of cataract surgery when they were under the influence of alpha blocking agents. There are, are agents that prevent that conversion of testosterone. The names of those medications, Proscar's Finasteride and Avidart is Dutesteride. LUTs, lower urinary tract symptoms, are really how the prostate has made the bladder behave we can use medications that actually alter the bladder function. And those are Vesicare, Enablex, Detrol. All of these various areas, this being the brain, the spinal cord, have input to how the bladder responds to stimulation. The bottom line is we can modify that with these medications. Let's talk about surgery or no surgery. Uh, watchful waiting. And another word for that is surveillance. If you're emptying your bladder and you just have some symptoms, you can live with that if you want to, go ahead. Watchful waiting is a reasonable strategy. But I would say they fall into the lower level of the elevated symptom index scores. What I'd like to do is introduce today's technology and tell you first, that there's many ways to solve the problems we've talked about tonight. I'm only going to talk about one. The green light, well the KTP laser, which is really what the green light is, the benefit is it vaporizes tissue very nicely, but only to a certain depth. But most importantly, it coagulates blood very efficiently. So you, and the prostate is a very vascular organ. So you can literally remove prostate tissue and not have any bleeding. You're about to see a green light laser at work and notice no bleeding. It's being vaporized. It's just disappearing. And again, no bleeding. It's a very safe technology it's not associated with a high incidence of sexual side effects. Point is, a well-trained urologist can do a great job with this. And if you're aware of your problems and they're diagnosed early, the treatments are a lot easier than if they're diagnosed later.